सुप्रभातम इन द गीता देर आर मेनी वर्सेस व्हिच गिव अश्योरेंस दिस इज वन सच वर्स गिविंग अश्योरेंसेस बट द प्रॉब्लम विद ह्यूमन माइंड इज दैट problem with our criminal mind is that whenever we see assurances we take that as encouragement there are several verses this is one of them it says it doesn't matter how many sins you have committed yoga will rescue you karikya sin sankarikya sins it will take you to you will cross over karikya sins you will cross over So it doesn't matter even if you are the most sinful of all the people. Jnana will take you across everything. Similarly, there are other verses. For example, in the ninth chapter, there is another verse which says, "Apichet sudura charo, majate ma mananya bhag saadhe va samantarya samyak devasito isha." If there is a dura chari, person of very negative conduct, bad conduct. If he comes to the path of yoga, you have to consider him to be noble, and he will change his ways. Assuring, assuring slogans are the very popular one. Sarva dharma pratyaya jama me kam sharan varja. Aham ka sarva baapi ke moti kani maashita. I will rescue you from all your sins. But these assuring verses are often taken as encouragement. People are asked in my classes also. So does it mean we should go on performing sins and finally say Krishna and everything will be done? Assurances should never be taken as encouragements. For example, when we say that yoga has no age limit, anybody can practice yoga. It doesn't mean that we are promoting yoga in old age. anybody can practice if i am addressing a group of senior citizens and if they express a concern that uh, we are now already above 70 can we come into yoga now i will naturally tell there is no age limit there is no bar in yoga right? there is no age bar there is no gender bar there is no caste bar if you have a longing if you have a willing and, and if you are a human being you can come any time but that doesn't mean that we are promoting practice of yoga in old age it should be done as soon as possible so when you give assurances to elderly people that you can practice even now it doesn't matter it doesn't mean that we are encouraging young people to postpone it or when we say that uh, yoga can cure your diseases it doesn't mean that you have to wait till you get a disease to practice yoga it applies to so many things a simple thing as insurance also when we say there is health insurance it doesn't mean that you have to be careless about your health because there is health insurance it will take care of in the insurance industry it is a well known fact especially in the us in the us the insurance is a very widespread industry and everybody almost everybody has insurance there some insurance or the other health insurance life insurance and it so happens that uh, because everybody has health insurance they start becoming careless about their health why is their health insurance will take care of them the purpose of insurance the purpose of health insurance is not to encourage sickness the purpose of health insurance is if in case it goes wrong as a fail safe it is not to encourage you to be careless to invite sickness i saw once a Diabetes patient taking his diabetes pills and gulping that with Pepsi. What do you make of it? In his mind, he may be thinking, "I'm taking the tablet, so it doesn't matter if I drink Pepsi." So, if the attitude, whenever assurance is given, whenever there is a doctor, whenever there is tablet, it doesn't mean that you have it. It is increasing sickness. Your attitude should not go to the negative side. Okay, I am taking that with this pill, so it doesn't matter even if I drink Pepsi. I will take a tablet with Pepsi. It is absurd. 
Similarly, if there are, when we encourage people to become doctors, it doesn't mean that we are encouraging more people to fall sick. So everywhere, whenever assurances are given, it does not mean that we are giving encouragement for you to do the opposite. So similarly here, it says, even if you are the most sinful of all people, sarvebhya bhavebhya pavkartamaha, even then, jnana, here jnana refers to atma jnana, not physics chemistry. Jnana plavena in vasantarishasi, pravana means a raft or a boat. Jnana will take you across. When is an assurance given? When do you give assurance to somebody? You give assurance to somebody when, I will broadly categorize into three situations. One situation where you give assurance to somebody is that they have committed something bad intentionally, they have committed a crime intentionally, for some reason they are doing it, and now they started realizing that they have been doing bad things and they want to change their ways. They are feeling guilty about their past. The best example for this is uh, how Narada Maharshi changed Valmiki. Valmiki was a dacoit, he used to torment people, loot them. But Narada Maharshi changed him because the willingness to change was there in that man. It was not that uh, he thought I am doing the right thing. At some point he realized that what I am doing is not, it's not the right direction. So when a person starts feeling guilty for his wrongdoings, that is when assurance is given. Assurances can, cannot be given to somebody who thinks what he is doing is right. For example, here, if this verse is told to Duryodhana, it doesn't make sense. Duryodhana thinks that he is, uh, I mean, he, in Mahabharata, Duryodhana even accepts that janami dharmam nachame pravritti, janami dharmam nachame nivritti. I know what is right, but uh, what to do? I don't feel like doing it. I know what is wrong, but what to do? I always feel like doing it. He justifies it saying that God is sitting in my heart and therefore it is God is making me bad, do bad things. In Mahabharata, that verse comes, Duryodhana verse. So if this verse is told to Duryodhana, it doesn't make sense because he is not feeling guilty. He is supporting his own sins. So he's in that, he's still in that phase where he wants to do commit few more things. So at that phase, you cannot give an assurance. Assurance doesn't make any sense there. For him, Duryodhana, if he gives assurance, he will take, uh, take this as encouragement to commit sins. So this is uh, one situation where a person has committed, for some reason has committed crimes or grave sins, and he is now feeling guilty for it, he has become very sensitive. They want to change their way, and that is when assurances are given. Another example is that of uh, Famous example is that of Angulimala, who was one of the most violent persons of those times, a terrorist, who used to kill people, cut their fingers and put it around his neck. Even he realized when he encountered Buddha, there was, there was conversation between the two, when, and Angulimala realizes that, yes, I am doing wrong, but he thinks that there is no other way, I cannot turn back now, society will not accept me, so it has become a kind of majguri, helplessness. He, I want to change, I am feeling guilty, but I can't change. Then Buddha gives him assurance, no, you can change if you have the willingness, if you have the longing to change. I will allow you to come into my Sangha, I will make you a monk. And then he changes. So when a person has that longing to change, Assurances are given. Buddha gave assurance to Anguli Mara, he protected him, and eventually he became one of the most accomplished uh, monks under Buddha. He, he was renamed as Ahimsaka, which was, a, which was apparently his original name. He became one of the most non violent ones. So, when a person is really longing to change, assurance, then if assurances are given, it transforms them for good. This is one case. The other case where assurances are given is uh, of a little, little milder category that you have very good intentions, you want to do as much good as possible to the society, but you don't have clarity of thought. 
So you try to do a certain thing, it collapses, it produces lot of bad, and then you go into depression. Where I just say some good pura hai. Everything is going bad because of me. Good. This is called good person syndrome. Good people suffer more than bad people because good people are very sensitive, and when they do a certain activity, it doesn't go accordingly and it fails. It gives such negative effects. They go into get the depression and all that, and they find it very difficult to come out. This is another situation where assurances have to be given. It is not that you did intentionally. You did something fine and according to your capacity. You did. It went wrong. Don't take it on you. That is another kind of ego. Actually, when you do something, something goes wrong without your intention, and you take the whole load on you, telling that I did everything because of me it went wrong. It is another type of ego. It is good person's ego. You think you start believing that you are the manager of the world or some kind of illusion like that. The world is running because of you. I will give an example for that. Krishna himself is an example. Nobody observes Krishna's life or Rama's life as a real life story. They read it as some fantasy. Therefore, they don't realize the situations that Krishna goes through or Rama goes through. For example, in Mahabharata. A colossal war is about to take place. Almost the entire country is going to participate. So many attempts have been made to strike a deal to maintain peace. Twice or thrice, Sanjaya tries and some other people try, and all those attempts fail. Finally, everybody looks at Krishna and says that uh, now you are our only hope to avoid war. We will send you as our uh, duta, Shanti duta. Somehow, as a final attempt, you have to make sure that the war doesn't happen. Everybody is looking at him in the sense now he is made accountable, kind of, for the war, whether the war happens or not. He goes to cover the sabha. He does whatever he whatever he can. He does. He gives a very powerful speech, very diplomatic speech. He tells this has to be done, or there will be battle. We can avoid it. Everybody endorses it in that cover of sabha, as, uh, except uh, the other actors, the royal and all those people that uh, do do people the company. Those people don't accept him, and that attempt fails. The battle takes place. Millions of people die. Now just imagine, put yourself in Krishna's position and see how you would have felt. You would have felt extremely depressed because of me. The peace deal failed, and because of me, the war is taking place. It was in my hands. I could have done something. I could, I could not do. Now millions of people are dying. So you will go into terrible depression. You had very good intention. You failed in that. You could not succeed in that whatever activity it is. And the big war takes place. Imagine how you will feel. Krishna did not feel depressed because he knew whatever I could do, I did. So when a good person goes into this good, per good man syndrome, when they start feeling guilty for something which they did not have intention, then you have to give assurance. You have to give such verses. It was not. It was. It is not that once a sinner, forever a sinner. You can come out of it. Another example is uh, in Buddha's life. This is not well known, but it is there in Buddha's biography. In Buddha's uh, teachings, one of the main teachings is that of impermanence. To see that everything is impermanent, everything is in a flux. Whatever you call as me is never permanent. It is all a flux. Body is a flux, mind is a flux, emotion is a flux. There is nothing constant there. It is just an aggregate of different elements in constant flux. It is in constant. Dynamic motion. Impermanence is one of his main teachings, and another main teaching is emptiness. It is one of the most misunderstood uh, teachings of Buddha. Now, when Buddha was alive, there were several uh, monasteries in different states of the country in those times, Magadha and Kosala and so many other places. In one of the Monasteries where Buddha, Buddha himself was staying there. A large number of monks committed suicide. Monks under Buddha, 
who were studying under Buddha, who were directly under Buddha, who were receiving his teachings directly from him, committed suicide many of them. And uh, Buddha asked why. Many people gave him that news, many have committed suicide. Buddha asked why. They said uh, because they thought everything is impermanent, so what is the point in living? They went into pessimism. Then at that moment, Buddha obviously felt bad, but he does not say that they committed suicide because of me. He says they misunderstood my teachings. If they had doubts, they should have asked me. As a spiritual leader, he obviously feels bad. He calls all the remaining monks and tells them how the remaining monks misunderstood his teachings. But he does not go into depression in the way we, will, we would have gone because of me, because of my teaching they committed suicide. So when you go into such negativity, assurances have to be given. And the third type when you have to be given assurances is where it, where it applies here in this case, to Arjuna's case. Every profession inherently contains certain negative aspects. There is a verse which uh, mentions that in the Gita, Sarvarambhai Yodhana Dhume Nadi All work, every activity is covered with some dosha or the other. There will be some fault in it. Every activity will have some negative aspect to it. A soldier and a butcher, all these activities, it is obviously seen. A soldier has to kill, a butcher has to kill. They have to do the dirty job for the sake of others. But they are not personally responsible for that dirty job. They are doing it on behalf of us, but we forget that. So when uh, <coughs> such faults or the shortcomings are available in a particular job, or if you have to take a milder example, in a teacher's profession there is punishment, they have to punish the students. So that is a negative aspect of being a teacher. Punishment has to be there. It's some kind of aggression, some kind of violence. <coughs> so every activity will have some kind of negativity to it. And just because it is there, you should not consider that as a sin and try to avoid that. That was what Arjuna was trying to do. Soldiering was his activity, he is supposed to do that, and he says that soldiering will give rise to sin. That is where this verse applies to Arjuna. As Krishna <coughs> says, he clarifies it that in other chapters later, that uh, just because you are uh, activity contains a particular fault, you don't become a sinner, but this is another problem with good people. When something is necessary, when something is required, something is needed to be done, now here, in case of a soldier, he needs to kill, there is no other way, he has to fight, he needs to kill. When something is needed to be done and you refrain from it saying it is a sin, it becomes absurd, society will not run. As a matter of fact, it so happens that, uh, it seems, in the US, war veterans who have participated in the war and killed many people, after the war, they go into depression. Because they have done a dirty job. They did not do it personally, they did not do want to do it personally, but because of some conflict with the higher politicians or whatever, they had to go to the battlefield and kill. And after the war, it seems they are the ones who suffer. So for them, this has to be told. Assurances have to be given that you did your job, it is not that you have uh, acquired some demerits. So, when assurances are given, that should never be taken as encouragement. Assurances are given only at a particular situation, you have to remember of the context always. When an assurance has to be given, only then an assurance has to be given. If somebody is justifying their sins, don't give assurances. This verse doesn't make sense. If somebody is justifying their own sins, if somebody is feeling guilty for their sins, then assurances have to be given. So all teachings, spiritual teachings, have to be taken in the right context. If you simply cherry pick some verse, like this, if you simply read this verse, our criminal mind will necessarily go, oh, then I will go on committing sins, because finally jnana will save me. It is never to be taken as an encouragement. Assurances and encouragements are always opposite things. This is one example, it applies to all spiritual teachings. All teachings are, have to be taken in the, in the right context. If you take it out of context, 
it will look absurd, it will, it will become absurd. Thank you.